Hello. I thought today I would read a few creepy, scary stories from Reddit. Some ghost stories. Uh, sometimes I just get the urge to film right then and there. Just something fun. But that can't always be done because, you know, researching and editing. I have a few long videos I'm working on, a few shorts, some projects. Okay. So, I don't know why I'm nervous. <laughs> I don't plan to edit this. I'm just going to read. I read well. If I mess up, I mess up. All right. Part of my setup. You can see some of it. This is not going to be my background. Maybe. It depends. Anyway, all right. So as I'm going, um, since I'm not going to edit, I'm not going to post usernames on the screen. I'm going to spell them out and read them just real quick. That way, uh, if someone wants to find them, they can. Most of these stories are from about a year ago. One's from about two months ago. Okay, so I'm going to make sure I'm on the first story. All right. So this is reddit r slash ghost stories let me fix my camera real quick and make sure it's you know lowered correctly a little bit more uh, uh, uh. all right there we go all right now i have skimmed over these i don't have them memorized so forgive me if I don't stare into the camera the whole time. All right. This story is from the Reddit user. Oh, Sid Vicious. All right. C-I-D-D-V-I-C-I-O-U-S-42069. All one word. Sid Vicious 42069 spectacular. North Jersey in the mountains. Our family home was part of a mining railroad system. The old railroad was in our back woods. Our home was an old slaughterhouse, slaughterhouse <laughs> slash livestock farm. I dug up skulls and bones my whole childhood. We actually had the ruins of the old slaughter mill in a field with a possible blood drainage system that went to a pit holding lots of bones. My entire childhood, things would just fly off my shelves onto the floor, or you could set an object down on the counter and it would be gone. I actually witnessed these things. Sometimes I would feel someone sit on my bed too. As a young adult, I constantly burned sage in my room to try and get rid of whatever was stuck in my room. My parents remodeled the house and found a bunch of animal bones buried in the foundation. And by foundation, I mean a pile of dirt with wood set on top of it. So no concrete. Ooh, just dirt, wood floor. Ooh, so they like right under their feet. Okay, continuing. Eventually I felt the scary thing leave my room, but there was another ghost still present. During COVID, I moved back in with my parents, and a few times a week, I would hear their heavy A door open and shut. They had a porch and deck with multiple doors, so air pressure literally could not cause a door slam. I'm going to stop it here because this part kind of confused me a little. I'm assuming that they mean, okay, they have an enclosed porch. That's what I'm assuming, a porch and deck with multiple doors. And then, so no air pressure. So I'm assuming they had an enclosed porch with doors that would be shut. 
So even if the front door was left open, the air pressure, there would be none because the deck already has the door shut. That, that's what I'm assuming because otherwise, yes, multiple doors is exactly how the air pressure causes another door to slam shut or open. Let's continue. All right, so no air, so air pressure could literally not cause a door to slam. I'd hear heavy boot steps downstairs and yell, hey, dad, no response. Check my parents' window that overlooked the driveway, and of course, no one would be home. Parents are still in this house and say that they constantly find all the kitchen cabinet doors open or they hear stuff in my old room that sounds like a bookcase falling over and they'll rush up to look and everything will be perfectly fine, fine, or things will go missing and then they'll find them in my old room. When they were modeled, hold on a second. I had to revise this sentence so it made sense. When they remodeled the area where the attic door and staircase met became my mini bathroom. And boom, hold on. I don't like my wall to be showing. It feels weird. <laughs> All right. So you understand what I'm saying? You go up some stairs, meets the attic door. I'm guessing somewhere right there at the top of some stairs they remodeled and that became a mini bathroom. My dad never believed in ghosts, but now that he's retired, he 10,000% believes we got ghosts. He was in the military, so he thinks it's funny and calls the ghost Gladys, but definitely prefers to spend his time outside. My mom does not think it is funny at all. <laughs> and I'm just glad I live very far away and I refuse to stay with them when I visit. <laughs> that, that's freaking creepy. Okay. Just, just, whoo. Old slaughterhouse, livestock, skulls and bones a possible blood drainage system that led to a pit with bones. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Let's hope that's all that happened there. Oh gosh. That's a crazy story. Okay. So the evil entity, I'm guessing a mad spirit. It would not be that easy to get rid of a demon, I guess, just by burning sage. As a young adult, I constantly burned sage in my room to try and get rid of whatever was stuck. Eventually I felt the scary thing leave my room, but there was another ghost, which is the one they called Gladys. Huh. And it sounds like that one just played around. Sorry, I have an itch on my lip. I keep looking at the wrong side of the phone. <laughs> I'll get better. I promise. All right. So this is a uh, still under Reddit r slash ghost stories. They all are. Okay. This username is hefty underscore solid one nine one five. So H E F T Y underscore S O L I D one nine one five hefty solid. <laughs> I had a mimic experience. Here's my story. So when I was a teenager, my twin sister and I lived in the basement of my parents' house. The basement had kind of a smallish apartment that we slept in. It was pretty neat. We also had our dog Lucy down there staying with us. But one night my twin and I slept upstairs instead of the basement. Lucy, our dog, was downstairs. Anyway, I was woken up by our mom in the morning. She asked me, hey, were you guys just downstairs a couple of minutes ago? I said, no, 
mom, we slept here last night. We haven't been downstairs. She then left and I got out of bed to follow her into the dining room and asked her, why did you ask if we were downstairs? Then she said, I heard your voice say, be quiet, Lucy, to the dog. My mom also said that when my voice spoke, Lucy would growl and bark. Then my voice would get louder and say, be quiet, Lucy. That day, my mom and us girls went into the basement with the Bible. Our mom read out loud from her Bible. Then I placed a cross on the countertop. The next morning, the cross was on the floor. That's creepy. That's creepy. That's creepy. All right. So just mimics alone in general, just, just boo -hoo. the fact that they can uh, literally mimic you. They can pretend to be you and they use trickery to lure, lure you into a false sense of safety and security that it's your loved one, except when they mimic your own voice. There's a huge trend, if y'all haven't noticed, in mimics. Everybody's got a mimic experience now. I'm sure a lot of them are not real, but if this kind of stuff is true and exists, I'm sure some are real, you know? Ah! Trying to stop my, my computer wants to go black on me. Shut off, go in sleep mode, whatever you call it. But this is a weird story. Yeah. Um, the, the, <laughs> the mimic trend. This is the one story I chose that is only from two months ago. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but whether it's real or fake, it's still a good story. It's written well. If you imagine this stuff happening to you, it's creepy. Mimics. No, thank you. Okay. How many did I do? Okay. Saved four of them. All right. This username is Murky 600. M E R K Y 600. All one word. Murky 600 from about one year ago. All right. So this one's a little longer, but I skimmed over it and it's, it's worth it. It's worth uh, reading. It's worth listening to. It's neat. Weird, but neat. <laughs> All right, takes place, uh, it has to do with the Queen Mary. The story takes place in the 1970s and it's about the Queen Mary. So it's pretty cool. All right. My ghost story. The first part is written by my sister about when we visited the C Queen Mary back in the 1970s. I asked her what she remembered, her version of events. And then she puts quotes. All right, this is her sister talking to her. You were circa second grade and still very much in the early stages of learning how to read. We were standing shoulder to shoulder with our hands on the outside railing of the Queen Mary's outside deck. Remember the Queen Mary is a, a ship, right? Queen Mary's outside deck looking out toward the ocean. We left mom and dad out of sight and only relatively nearby to run over to see more of the ocean view. We stopped at a nice open and quiet spot. No one was close by to where we stood viewing the ocean harbor. In the near distance was an airplane towing a banner advertising an upcoming beach concert. You stood there and were trying to sound out loud the words on the banner and going, slowly as a beginning reader. After a short time of you struggling to read the banner out loud, I heard a woman's voice right behind the two of us. For just half a second, I thought mom had come up behind us, but then realized the voice wasn't mom's. But... This friendly sounding woman was gently 
sounding out the next syllable whenever you'd stop reading out loud when you were having trouble. But the woman sounded quite nice and was gently helping you along whenever you came to any hard combination of letters. You followed suit in perfect timing with her instructions. By the end of the banner's message though, I lost patience and I spoke out loud the very last syllable right at the same time I was turning around to smile and thank the woman for her help, but was confronted with, whoops, this, this can't be. There was absolutely no one around behind us, not just right between us where the helpful woman should have been, but no one in that entire section of the open dock deck, sorry, the open deck, i.e. no place for anyone to duck and hide open deck there. There's not, there's nowhere to go. It's, it's an open deck of a ship. Nowhere to go. Sorry, my son just came in here. Hello. Hi, baby. Okay, let me find my place. <laughs> Nowhere to run and duck and hide. Got it. Okay. Too spooky for me. And I decided we'd better go back ASAP to where we'd left mom and dad. Okay. What, baby? I'm not playing anything. I'm reading the ghost stories. I'm recording. Oh, okay. I thought you were playing. <laughs> Sorry. He's so cute. He's eight. All right. Uh, the story's not done. So finished. We decided we better get back ASAP to where mom and dad, where we'd left mom and dad. All right. Now that was her sister relaying the information to her. The poster now says, all right, now my part of the story. Funny thing is I remember the lady. She's the younger sister, by the way, the one that was struggling to read. Funny thing is I remember the lady. I do mean lady. Standing next to me before my sister arrived, her face was kind, but unremarkable. She had old lady flower dress, purse, maybe gloves, formal, big, big fan, <laughs> big, big fan of QM, Queen Mary. So she was a big, big fan of the Queen Mary, I'm guessing. Um, okay. Going on about what a beautiful ship she asked me, don't you think so? I was a polite kid. So I said something like, yeah, it's neat. I was busy looking at the other ships in the harbor. Then my sister arrived and the above narrative took place. I don't recall her speaking when my sister remembered her talking. I thought she had left already. That's the end of the story. There's a lot of stuff about the Queen Mary. This is a crazy story. Just two people remembering the same thing, but different parts of the events. That's cool. I would love to speak to them in person. Holy crap. Um, yeah, man, the queen Mary, this happened in 1970s. Ah, if my channel ever does take off and get bigger, I want to visit these places so bad, you know, like I'm so apprehensive to actually let something into my life because, you know, we as humans don't comprehend fully anything about the other side. We don't know and we, we won't know until we die. Either something will happen and we'll move on or we're just going to cease to exist and we won't know either way. So it doesn't matter, but it's just, I am worried about stuff like that. Letting something in, especially something really evil, demonic, you know, but I do want to visit these places. Um, I actually am working on a, a longer video, not too long, you know, but if anybody's ever heard of, um, rolling Hills asylum or rolling Hills insane asylum, 
in East Bethany, New York, uh, between Buffalo and Rochester. I actually used to live minutes away from it and had to pass it every time I drove to and from work, day, night, never went inside. No, <laughs> but I, I have a story that I'm going to uh, talk about my experience with the feelings I got driving past that place and um, maybe some history on the building because it, the history is crazy. It goes back to, mm, I think past the mid, mid 1800s, like a little earlier than that or a little later, one or the other mid 1800s, give or take some years. Okay. Let me go to the next one. Oh, somehow I went backwards. All right. This, this is a username. It's a funny username. Cheesecake truffle. It is spelled exactly how it should be, how it sounds. It's all one word. Cheesecake truffle. You look at the right part <laughs> of the phone. I keep looking over here. How funny. I don't plan to edit this at all. Have fun watching. I hope you love it. Cheesecake truffle. The story is about one year ago. All right. Now this story took place 20 years ago, poster posted about one year ago, about 20 years ago, I and my two children rented an apartment. The apartment was the top floor of a home built in 1910. After a couple of nights, we settled in for some sleep. Juicy juice. Oh yeah. Oh. I like to steal my son's juice boxes sometimes. <laughs> All right. Uh, sorry. Home built in 1910. After a couple of nights, we settled in for some sleep. I thought I was dreaming about my children playing, but woke up due to their noise. Both were asleep. I tried going back to sleep but the sounds resumed footsteps running across my ceiling giggling and laughter the next day i went to the attic to check things out nothing that night the sounds resumed ah, i completely lost my place okay a few days later i met my downstairs neighbors so i asked them about it the whole building was haunted by multiple entities. Goodness gracious. Their lights would shut off. The sinks would start running and they'd seen shadow figures. <laughs> so we just accept accepted it. My deceased uncle who would follow me everywhere would show up sometimes easily discernible as he's the only one that's ever been able to touch me. During that time, my uncle and grandma would show up in photos. During that time, my uncle and grandma would show up in photos. We had no problems with any of them. Oh, when they took pictures. <laughs> ah, dumb moment. <laughs> we had no problems with any of them good. That's good. All right. Um, continuing. Then we moved into a home I'd bought while packing. One of them unrelated to me managed to pack itself into a box. Yeah. The one that likes to open all the cabinets and drawers in the night, the one that takes things and hides them. We saw it as a child. So we named it Newt. N O O T. They named a little maybe child ghost Newt. That's cute. <laughs> now, if something goes missing, we kindly ask Newt to return it and wait a few minutes. It'll pop up somewhere obvious. The cats adore Newt as well. Hmm. And yes, my grandma and uncle are here, but the kids stayed behind. Oh. 
that's the end of that story. That's actually cute, sweet. Well, if it's true and real, it's cool that their grandma and uncle are there. They probably should move on, but you know, it's good. They had no problems with any entities or spirits and you know, you know, one thing and I'm trying to think of her name. I, how am I going to forget it? Loey. Hello, my name is Loey. Loey Lane, Loey Bug. As she says, if, if you know who she is, if you watch her, she's got a few million, maybe more <laughs> than just a few, um, subscribers. She is, a like a horror creepy channel. She plays scary games. Um, looks in the lore of things. She looks at scary TikToks. She does a lot of reaction to horror content. Uh, she's got a great personality. I do watch her. She shares a sentiment that I do that I'm sure a lot of people do when it comes to spirits and things, not of this world, you believe animals, you believe little children. Okay. Spe the animals, bro, there's just cats and dogs. There's just something. There's something that they can hear on a different frequency than us. There's something they can see on a different wavelength than us. You pay attention when they're staring at something or growling at something that's not there. Pay attention, <laughs> you know, and then children. I think it is a the fact that they're not, their minds are not corrupted. You know, they're so pure animals as well as children. They're, they're, they're the most pure and innocent. So I think that they are easily able to see through the veil, you know, that separates these realities. But that is one sentiment that uh, Loey and I share. And when she first brought it up, I was like, ah. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure a lot of people feel that same way if they're into, you know, spirits and spirituality and paranormal. Well, <sighs> nice deep breath. That was the last story. I didn't want to do too many. I have no idea how long this video is going to be. Oh, shoot. It looks like about. 30 minutes. Okay. I'm not going to edit it. I apologize for interruptions and mistakes. I really hope you enjoy this. I, I want to be able to just pick the, pick up the camera and quickly do something, you know, in between researching for all the other videos I have to do. So thank you. If you got this far, thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, obviously give it a like. If you have the hype button yet, if you want to hype me, hype me. Um, if you want to subscribe, you can subscribe. I don't have a lot of content, but make sure if you like core content, if you're not going to subscribe now, keep checking in with me every once in a while. <laughs> All right, everybody have a lovely day, lovely week, lovely month. Oh, have a great Halloween. I hope everybody has a wonderful Halloween. It's coming up. I have no idea what I'm going to be, but I have lots of stuff for my house to choose from. All right. Bye everybody. <laughs>